Right. It's that time, guys. Today is Thursday the 3rd of August. It's 9am. I'm just heading down to the hospital for kidney surgery. If there's more to this video, I didn't die. So we're outside, waiting for our taxi to the hospital now. Uh, Ellie's just ran back upstairs to get a couple of face masks in case we need them. I don't know if we do. We did last time we were in hospital. We had to wear them when we saw the doctors. That was it. Uh, yeah. I really don't want to have this surgery done, you know. I've been on medication for probably three weeks on Sunday. But I've been on medication for that 18 days. Low this blood pressure to tank my blood this medication to tank my blood pressure uh, it's made me a bit confused, disoriented, dizzy uh, heart pains intestinal issues the works it's, uh, it was not pleasant medication whatsoever and I imagine I've got to keep taking it for a while after the surgery too don't want this done So we're in here, we've got a ticket, we're number 138, 138 has been called next, and uh, let's see how this goes. This hospital is really nice actually, it's brand new, we're in a place called Science City, and um, we're just in the inpatient building for the first time. We've gone to the outpatients building six or seven times, CT scans, it's all very clean, very nice, very modern. I'm not looking forward to this. So it's the end of day one in hospital. Uh, the only thing I've done today is a contrast CT, uh, blood pressure, weight. That's it. All day been here for that, and they got me locked on the ward. I'm not allowed to leave, which is ridiculous. Uh, which means I can't smoke. I can't smoke cigarettes. Oh, you're in the hospital. You should be able to smoke cigarettes anyway. Fuck you. If you said that, fuck you. I need cigarettes. Yeah. It's too big to cover. The, that one, that one there. Mm -hmm. There's a sock trick. We used to have those ones in the army. Mm -hmm. You just climb up, stick a sock on the top of it, and the sock allows enough air in. It doesn't get tripped for carbon monoxide, mm. but it doesn't let enough air in that the smoke goes in and it turns it off. Mm. So if you do it with a condom, because we used to do them with condoms too, like um, if you do it with a condom, then mm. it goes off straight away. We found that out. <laughs> Socks work. Condoms don't. Way in the bathroom, so. Well, I can't see it because it's just, it's a different. That that one's down on the ceiling, mm. but then the extraction fan is a big square in the bathroom, isn't it? Mm. But then there's something inside that square. I can't see what it is because the square is like blinding me. We definitely can't cover that square as well. It's fucking huge. No, no, no. I think that maybe it's just 
Don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, well, I did burn. I did burn a piece of paper in there, like tissue paper. I give it a good. You know, the Snoop Dogg flip the tissue. Does this burn? Yeah, no alarm. But I didn't follow up. Uh, I'm going to follow up when it gets quiet, when there's nobody walking around. So you should let me out, I say you should you should let me outside you should let me outside in the daytime. Find a way to smoke tomorrow. Blood test seven thirty. Today they took me for a CT and before they could even book me in I disappeared. <laughs> they said and he was just left there for the smoke the fucking chalk outline of me in the air. Where's your husband gone? Blum, blum, blum. I don't know. Maybe he's gone for a cigarette. Fucking 100% gone for a cigarette. Huh. We'll catch you tomorrow. It's 7 a.m. It's day two. My primary focus has become that door. That door. That door is the only thing I'm waiting for. As soon as it opens, I've had this cigarette, it's broken, but I've had this cigarette in my pocket for 18 hours. That door, as soon as it opens, I am just walking straight out. I'm going down the stairs. I'm smoking this cigarette. My two oh, wonderful roommates last night, even though there's signs on the wall that say, keep fucking quiet they spoke for four or five hours until 10 o'clock at night uh, talking about random nonsense loudly not even quiet conversation loud conversation and then um, he left his phone on loud all night long and got messages at least at least one message an hour loud alerts so no sleep they seriously don't want to try and force me to stay on this ward and not smoke cigarettes today because well they can't they can't it's that simple I made it out, I made it out to the staircase, I see evidence of smoking, I see evidence of smoking in the staircase, they uh, tried to stop me from going off the ward, it's not fucking happening. As soon as that door opened, I ran out and they tried to tell my wife, uh, pretty woman, Johnny can't leave. Fucking can, absolutely am. I can't believe that they lock you in the ward. I'm not even on surgery until Monday. It's it's Friday morning. They want to keep me locked in here until fucking Monday. Absolute piss take. Well, that was a nice fact. That was a good hitter. Yeah. It's been a long time since I could have taken too much of a cigarette. But, uh, I'm going to have another one. I'm going to have another one.
plan was to have them, if they took off the water for tests, but they brought the tests to me today. I assume they learned from yesterday because I just vanished. I don't understand, like I had surgery in the UK, they couldn't keep me in the surgery room, but they told me I had to, when I woke up from my surgery, they told me I had to sit down for two hours, it was fucking, we were in Liverpool, I live in Wales, it's fucking like 300 mile drive, maybe not 300, it's a few hundred miles, it's two and a half hours, three hours, with good traffic, I was scheduled for a 9am surgery, 11am before the surgeon turned down. My wife did a supply run. She got herself a blanket because we had shared a hospital blanket last night. And she got herself this pillow, but I've fucking stolen this straight away. And uh, I'm on this, uh, I don't know what it is actually. This is to increase blood, yeah. this is to increase my blood volume. I'm going to have three of these today. And a heart exam as well, right? I'm going to have a heart test. Yeah. I assume that's going to be an echocardiogram. Uh, but yeah. I just went to the movie, The Wandering Earth 2. I can watch this as many times as I want for 48 hours. Instead of allowing me access to other films for the same price for 48 hours, I can only watch this one. So, Wandering Earth 2. If you haven't seen The Wandering Earth, by the way, uh, Wandering Earth 1 is a fucking brilliant film. Can't vouch for this one yet, it's only been on for five minutes, but yeah, I'll get back with you when there's a different update. So, it's our first meal, but second, but I didn't have a first meal yesterday, <coughs> that takeaway. Yeah, it's not bad. I had uh, beef and tomatoes with corn and rice. And what did you have? With pork, mm. seaweed? No, not seaweed. Do you know what it is? I don't know how to say that anymore. Pork and something with some broccoli and rice. And I, I don't like tomatoes, so she had tomatoes as well. Mm. Yeah. It's not bad food to be fair, actually. But when you were in hospital with me being born, mm. your food was pretty fucking good, isn't it? Like, mm. Five meals or six meals a day? Yeah, five or six meals a day, fair, but we're only getting mm. three. Well, mm. and breakfast can hardly be called a meal. Like a bowser is not like a meal. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Other meals. And I just paid paid money to watch this fucking movie as absolute dog shit. Just politics so far. Well, I think we're about three quarters of the way through and something has just started to happen. But I've lost interest a long time ago. Yeah. I've, uh, I'm on bag number two. Bag number two going in the fucking arm. 
I will be escaping. I told him I need a walking trolley for that fucking bag so I can get out. Oh, we've only got two on the board and they're both in use. Well, go and get one of them for me then. <laughs> I want to take a ship by myself. Because I, I said earlier I need the bar. And she's like, I'll hold the bag for you. It's like, you'll drop the bag once you have to hold your fucking nose. I've only got, i got to do this bag and then one more bag. And I, I don't know what's happening with the heart exam. Is that going to be in the afternoon, do you think? You mean the, the exam yesterday? No, they said that the doctor that came in mm. yesterday and spoke said, to, he said that today mm. I have to do blood tests, which I've done. Mm. And a heart test, heart exam. Ah, oh, ah, oh. just the same, the same one we've done yesterday. He put uh, something on the chest. Uh, and the I thought they, I thought it was going to be something else. I thought they were going to. I thought I was getting off the ward. I think so. I hope. So. I hope that I have to go somewhere else and do an endocardio, endocardiogram. Right, we'll catch you again sometime. As and when. Well, they kept, kept me on the lock yesterday, but uh, one good thing about being a foreigner is everybody sees you as handsome. And uh, the lady working the door stopped people from coming and going. She said, As long as you don't go in the lift, I was like, I ain't going in the lift, I'm just getting an answer to you. Well, don't worry about it, love. Oh, straight out. My locked in situ situation has been resolved. That's a really nice down here. If you've seen the view from my apartment window, those are the same mountains. We just, well, we're in 25, 30 minute drive. Well, it's 20, 20, 25, 30 minute drive. If I drive, the taxi was like 45, 45 minutes. <clears throat> just quite far south. This is almost nearly all the way out of Chengdu. Science City. Uh, yeah. That road there with those fancy street lights is the main road that runs north south all the way through Chengdu. And uh, you can probably see somewhere in the distance uh, there will be a Metro Line 1 stop somewhere, I don't know. Science City Quashi Hospital. Science City Quashi Hospital. Uh, everyone, like, they just got, they got these babysitters. Keep telling me to smoke in the toilets. I'm not, I'm not willing to smoke on the ward in, in the toilets. There's a different fire escape. Don't mind. Still probably against the wall. There's a big no smoke inside by there. But. Uh, is what it is. I'm not the only one who put rules. Yep. Done all my shit. Done all those bags. They were unhappy that I'd unplugged myself. It is what it is. This needle is so fat. It's like a I don't know what kind of needle it is, like a straw, it's made of plastic. It's so fat, it's very uncomfortable. Right, well, I'll catch you uh, another time. Oh, for those of you, body transformation update, I haven't exercised since May. And I'm back up to 80, back up to 80 kg. I, the lowest I got, 73. Got all the way up to 73. And yeah, back up to 80. Let's see it on my face. Look at that face. And my gut as well. They will be coming off. I have new found motivation. Alright, catch you again. So, evening meal time. I got some, was it pork or chicken? 
No idea. Sweet and sour chicken <laughs> with rice. And we've got into some leek rich. porridge. Is it leek? No, vegetable like cabbage, maybe. Cabbage porridge. Some mushrooms with some chilies and carrots in there. It's a fair meal. Not so big, but not very bad. <clears throat> it's probably the most Chinese food I've eaten my entire time in China <laughs> the last two days in a row. But, uh, yeah. Not much on tomorrow. The hospital's closed. We're just not going to stay here. And the same thing on Sunday, except Sunday there's a reason for me to be here in there for mm. monitoring before the surgery. Yeah. But yeah, surgery Monday. Yeah. There's not going to be many more updates until Sunday night. And then Monday afternoon when I wake up. If I wake up. They sleep all day. So it's uh, 9.30 in the evening. The evening shift nurse changes at 5.30, and since 5.30, they won't let me back out again, but I'm an unstoppable force. I managed to get out a couple of times, but now I think it's too late and I, I can't get back in. There's no traffic. I was lucky to get out for this last one half an hour ago. I can't exactly phone them to let me in because they're not you getting someone in trouble, and I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I'm just waiting for some traffic to pass by and let me in. See what happens now. I'll probably get back. Well, I will get back in. I will, I will get back in. Just a matter of when. <laughs> so I, uh, I did make it back in. It's late in here now. My roommates are bedding down for the evening, we've got our curtain drawn, and uh, there'll be no more excursions beyond the ward until my 7 a.m. excursion. <laughs> as soon as that door opens, oof, straight out, and luckily the day shift nurse, the one that I've managed to sweet talk, and luckily she's staying on the ward. Uh, I don't know if she always stays on the ward, or just... She's got someone here, I don't know, but she's on the ward still, even though she's finished work. And she saw me getting some water, I give her a classic head smile. And she let me back in after she got her water, man. She made me wait for two minutes, but yeah, she let me back in. Uh, yeah. There's nothing really interesting going on. This video might be quite long. I might have to do this in several parts. Break it up into the days. But I'm just vlogging the experience. I imagine hospitals in America are much different to you. Or, well, I, I know they're much different in the UK. Because when I had my surgery in the UK on my eye, I just woke up and stormed out. So there's traffic to be avoided. I must leave. Bring me the contents of Locker 16. I was fucking high as balls when I woke up from that shit. I just pulled, I told her, told the nurse, get all this shit off me now. Heart monitors, drips, and said, get it all off now. She's like, I'll be there in a minute. She said, I'll be there now in a minute. But we ain't in fucking Wales, we're in Liverpool. Now means fucking now, not now in a minute. Rip, pulled the IV straight out. You can't do that, you can die. I was like, well, that's why they made these little stickers when they put the IV needles in, so it's idiot proof. So even nurses can take them out. She didn't like that. But she took off the EKG stuff and just booted the fucking door open. Stormed through the second waking up area where you're supposed to sit for observation for two hours. Booted that fucking door open. Bring me the contents of Locker 16. One of you come and watch me piss. <laughs> My mum had a subway sandwich waiting for me. I took a bite of the sandwich, walked into the toilet, started pissing. Look at it! Because <laughs> yeah, those are the conditions. I had to eat something and urinate after the surgery before I could leave. I asked for some pain medication. They offered me paracetamol. I said, nah, let's get fucking out of here. And uh, they were all saying, oh, I'm, 
Is, is there something wrong with him? Uh, yes, <laughs> there's something wrong with him. You've made him late for the traffic we wanted to avoid. So, yeah. The surgery can be fun on Monday because they haven't got, they're not ready for what is about to happen to them. We'll see you soon. Morning, people. As you can see, my roommates kept me awake all night last night. I don't mind so much the man by the window. He had surgery yesterday and he was in a lot of pain. He kept pretty fucking quiet to be fair, but then from 6.10 this morning is now 7.04. It's now 7.28. From 6 fucking 10 this morning. He's in the, in the middle. <coughs> As soon as we got, as soon as we woke up, he's left the room. As soon as I've emerged from my fucking curtain, he's left the room. I can kill him. So it's today's dinner: chicken curry, and some more. Was that fun? Yeah. cauliflower? It's not, not black fungus. Yeah, cauliflower and bacon. Preserved, preserved But uh, this chicken curry. Isn't up to scratch for me. I, uh, I would begin to take away. I don't like this. But it looks pretty good. So mm. If you like that kind of shit. <laughs> so, Saturday evening, in real time. Got some kung pao chicken in. It's actually not bad. Yeah, the, uh, the wife has got some porridge. What kind of porridge is this time? This is some green rice and pork. Yeah, yeah. Rice and porridge. Mm. I got rice and kumpo chicken. Yeah, it's been a day. We're about about to go on to the um, evening shift, so I'll scoff this down, and I'll see if hopefully the day shift lady is still working, because the night shift lady doesn't like to let me out. But I'm an unstoppable force and I will, I will get out there, it doesn't matter. And today we had an um, interview with a good for nothing useless doctor, just talking because he liked the sound of his own fucking voice over and over again. And then she, she's paying attention to what he's saying, but you didn't need to know any of them, right? I'm the one getting come on, I'm the one that needs to understand. So it's dinner time again, it's uh, Sunday lunchtime. I've got my surgery in the morning. I've had about five doctors visit me and tell me, no more eating after 10 o'clock tonight. No more eating after midnight tonight. Another doctor came in just then, the one from yesterday with the shit fucking shoes, with his Crocs. Guess what he, what he hasn't got in his shoes today. No, no, he's got the same Crocs on, but he hasn't got those stupid little fucking badges on them. No more astronauts and fucking bullshit on there. I did say yesterday when you seen this doctor wearing fucking Crocs with all the little kiddies badges on him. How the fuck can I trust a man to cut me wearing shoes like that? Fucking dingleberry. Yeah, the food looks pretty good today. I got beef and tomato again. Yeah, uh, you've got... You've got a... That's fucking... actually your meal. The broccoli and... Oh, well that's the... yours though, isn't it? Because I'm not going to eat the fucking broccoli in there. Yeah. Get these open. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones in here that know how to use a fucking hospital bed. Yes, they're very on the window, so. Mm Beef and tomato, sweet corn and chilies, mm. broccoli, 
I don't know what's in there. Was it pork? I'm not eating it anyway, so that's yours. What have you got? What's yours? It's called Yushara Sweet. Sweet, sour flavor. And some, I forgot, black fungus. Some black fungus. Some black fungus. Lettuce? Mm. Sounds fucking disgusting. <laughs> the same lettuce as yesterday, asparagus, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, it's just a daily meal update. I got into it last night with the door staff. The, he shouted at me. There's a new guy. Because the old, the evening staff is always different to the day staff. She's always the same, the day staff. And she lets me go without complaint. But the night staff seem to be up, up their own asses a bit. And they, and they were trying to stop me last, well, every day. To stop me. And the guy last night was shouting at me, You can't go out! You fucking can. You haven't provided a medical reason for me not to. So, I will. Goodbye. Those IV drips give you a fucking powerful scream, I tell you. So, uh, we're 10 hours before surgery. Just gonna have a shower and put on my lovely striped pajamas. And there we are. All dressed up nice and fancy, free ball in it. My surgery in the morning. Now, it's currently half past nine. Half an hour left where I can eat and drink. I don't have anything to eat here. I, don't, I do have a drink. I've got some lemonade, some soda water with lemon. And um, yeah, I've taken off my jewelry, I've got to take off my earrings. And that's it. I'm going to see if I can sneak off the ward. It's going to be very difficult to sneak in my striped pajamas. But let's see if I can get off the ward for one more smoke outside of the eating and drinking window. I think that's fair to them. And uh, yeah, the next time you see me, probably be in the morning before I go in when I'm being wheeled away. And then when I wake up, if I wake up, but hopefully I will. If you watch this far, chances are you know that I did, unless I make my wife upload this. I'll probably will in testimony. She doesn't like it when I'm making jokes. I was making jokes with my brother about not waking up and how. I can't even try not to die because my doctor's been wearing Crocs. Fucking doctor yesterday. So we had an interview with a doctor, talking us through surgery, waffling on and on and on and on. Wearing fucking Crocs with little astronaut badges on it. Those are fucking cute. How can I trust a doctor who's wearing fucking Crocs? Shoes on. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow. Well, I thought I was fucked this evening getting out here for a cigarette, but uh, because the door woman, she's not sitting by a door, and that's how I usually get out. I just go there and I'm like, come on, just open the door. Come on, just open the door. But she's not standing by, she's not sat at the desk by the door, she's elsewhere. Luckily, there was a medical emergency right outside my door. Some geezer fucking ripped his IV drip out of his hand and bled all over the floor. So the nurses were dealing with him right outside my door as I was trying to make my way, as I was trying to make my way out for a cigarette. And she was trying to clean up the blood that was all over the floor with a cotton swab, some fucking. Uh, alcohol fluid and a cotton swab. <laughs> it was going to take her forever, so I just went and got her half a dozen tissues. And I had a cigarette behind my ear. She said, You are going smoking? I said, I'm going to try. She said, Okay, okay, I, I opened the door for you. Thank you for the tissue. So, yep, yeah, cheers, love. Only one, only one. So I just I brought a fresh bag with me. <laughs> So it's, it's gonna be only one break, only one time out the door. But yeah, this is the last opportunity for cigarette smoking. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, 
theatre rules, 12 hours, or however many hours, they said I'm not allowed to eat after 10 o'clock, it's now 9, it's now 9.36, so I won't be smoking after 10 o'clock tonight until after my surgery tomorrow. And she, she did say, you're going to smoke tomorrow? I said, yeah, after my surgery, not before, but after, yeah, 100% she said, oh, I don't know. You also said that you don't think I'll be able to walk tomorrow. So if I'm, if I'm able to walk, I'm able to smoke. We'll see how that goes. Fucking lights. Yeah. Wish me luck. See you tomorrow. Get it wrapped up. She's made me laugh. I think I'm gonna die. We're 24 hours after the surgery now. Uh, just about. Uh, fucking auto pain relief thing is doing nothing really, just making my fingertips numb. Uh, didn't sleep any because of this noisy old cunt again. It leaves his fucking phone on full blast all night long. Snores like a beast. Gets up at 5 o'clock and just starts making fucking hacking noises all the time. <clears throat> fucking so annoying. And uh, Ellie didn't sleep at all because she was fucking waiting for doctors to come and put my final IV fluids on for me. So she couldn't sleep because she had to wait to change the bags when the bags run out. Which I think is unacceptable. A fucking doctor should be doing that. But, uh, yeah. Happy days. I haven't even seen this shit. Looks like it's pretty much stopped bleeding now, right? Mm -hmm. There's piss coming out of it now, isn't it? This one. Oh, it's just stained. Mm -hmm. Well, out of the surgery now. It's, uh, it's painful. I've got a fucking dick pipe I don't even know what the other pipe is for I don't know what the blood pipe is yeah this blood pipe just um you probably got some still got some blood in it yeah. I'm sure there's a drainage stint from the yeah. kidney yeah uh, I don't understand it doesn't make any difference I don't need to understand but, uh, yeah, I've been feeling fucked up all afternoon. Uh, I can't sit up. It is painful. Um, not dead. Oh, careful. Sorry. Careful, careful, careful. Oxygen, for some reason. And uh, the old heartbeat. Why the? No, obviously I can't go nowhere for a fag. So this afternoon there was no other patients in my room. Uh, just one of the sons, one of the, the, the man's son, was here. 
So I said to him, do you care if I spark one up or not? He said, no, I don't care. As soon as I let her, a fucking doctor walked in the room. She said, you're smoking, you're smoking. No, I'm not holding on, hold on the fire in my fucking hand. She said, you're going to burn yourself. I was like, I'm not smoking. I'm not. How do you say perfect timing? How do you say perfect timing? One may sure could. One may sure could. And couldn't be a worse, couldn't be worse timing. The one you told me earlier. One may sure could and the worst possible timing. Sway. Sway Zao Gao. Sway Gao Zao Gao. Sway Zao Gao the shit here. Yeah. So, hilarious. When they took me to the theatre, I wasn't asleep, so they wheeled me off this ward to the surgery ward, uh, and I was bed 30 over there. It was at least... Come on. Stick it back in the bottom. There? Yeah. You sure? I think so. You're feeling it? Yeah. Yeah, got over there and uh, they didn't put me to sleep before they took me to the operating room. They took me in the OR and I had to watch them open up all the surgical bundle, throwing it out onto the fucking sterile green cotton mat and then wait around for the fucking doctor. She said, are you nervous? I said, of course I'm fucking nervous. Is anyone not nervous when they're in, in this room? She said, oh yeah, no, everybody's usually nervous. She's like, why am I awake? I don't want to be awake. I want to be asleep. Oh, we're just waiting for a doctor. I said, well, it don't make no difference. The surgery's going ahead. Just put me to fucking sleep. She said, oh, we can put some music on for you. She put some music on, some Cardi B song. And then a fucking Justin Bieber playlist. We got to baby. Baby, 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 no. I said, nurse, change this fucking music or I'm going to fucking kill myself. She said, okay, what would you like? She said, anything, that, as long as it's not Justin Bieber. She said, Taylor Swift. I said, rock music. Rock music fucking only. And she put Blink-182 on. I said, That's okay. Uh, then some other guy came in and asked me for the fifth time, are you allergic to anything? I said, yeah. Bullshit. So I put him to sleep. Put him to fucking sleep. Put me straight to fucking sleep after that. Fucking irritating. Uh, and they kept putting a blanket on me. I'd take the blanket off. In the corridor, the nurse is saying, we've got the English speaking one. How's your English? Go and practice with him. They come in. One by one, about 15 times has happened. Get the nurse to do it. In, uh, about 15 times, a random nurse comes in, tucks a fucking blanket up to my chin. Oh, I would have made that cunt come and do his job. Fucking lazy bastard. Oh, and I've got this anal geezik, anal geezik pump, I don't know. Hmm? The, the name of that thing. Anal geezik pump. Hmm.
No, I don't want to get, I don't want to get goofy on that stuff. Uh, it has been painful all day. Mm. The way the pipes are, mm. it's pretty painful. Mm. The only time it was worse was my fucking dick pipe. I think they've done the dick pipe wrong. So I've needed a piss since I fucking woke up. And there's only 150 fucking milliliters of piss in the bag. And I can feel the pressure in my fucking bladder. And I, I, every time I try to piss, nothing fucking happens. It's just slowly dribbling out to fucking drip of piss every minute. More than 200 now, is it? Good. Right. I can't be fucked to talk to you anymore. I'll speak to you in a bit. Oh. I can't, I can't fucking, I can't laugh, bro. So that's pretty much it. This is the last evening I'll be staying here. Uh, I've been running a slight fever since the surgery, and my stomach is full of air. Like, my abdomen is full of fucking air. It's taut. And my voice is gone because they fucking intubated me. Why the fuck did I need to be intubated? It was an hour long surgery. I wasn't intubated around my fucking eyeball cat on. <sighs> so I've been off my pain medication for the last few hours. is substantial and the evening guy finally let me up for a cigarette I can't my voice is fucked <clears throat> I, haven't, I haven't taken a shit since we got back on the ward on Monday it's Wednesday afternoon now Wednesday evening 7 o'clock but uh, I haven't taken a shit yet I can feel it. I, I know there's one in there, but I think the swelling from my kidney is blocking that area. And I've got numbness all that side of my body, all the left, all the left side of my body. I've got numbness on the surface skin. And I can't feel any pain when I'm poking in there. It just feels extremely, extremely tight. So I'm going to try and eat a dragon fruit tomorrow. Flush my guts. I'm going to Google it first, make sure that it's safe to do. So don't end up back here. I can't wait to fucking leave, noisy motherfucker in my middle space. Right. I'll see you when I see you, boys. Right, I'll see you when I see you. Final morning. Just woke up, got out of no qualms, and we're going to be leaving soon. We're just going to go to the desk, square the bill. Either they owe us or we owe them. Uh, I think they owe us. It's the man. The man in the bed space next to me. Middle of the bed. So I'm bed 20, bed 21, bed 22. The man in bed 21 has been irritating me all week. It has been a whole fucking week. 
been snoring like a motherfucker. If he's not snoring, he's burping, but it's not even real burps. I can hear him second year in, in and he's going, bye. Same fucking words when he's burping every time. Does my fucking head in. Uh, and then with the, <laughs> all the fucking time. Bed 22, the guy that was there got operated on, on Saturday and he was gone home by Monday. And then the bed was free for two nights. So I went to listen to bed 22 with bed 21, snore. And then last night they brought in a new person to bed 22. This guy snores like a fucking rhinoceros. It is insanely loud snoring. And matey boy in bed 21 was shouting us. He was like, hey, hey, trying to wake him up, banging the fucking wall burping as loud as he could to try and wake him up. Fucking, uh, I told him to stop it. I said, you got, you got, I said 21, you've got to stop. you got to shut up. And this morning, when bed 22 woke up, bed 21 guy, you snore, you snore, I didn't sleep well last night, you snore, you snore so loud. I said, you fucking snore as well. He said, what? What? Yeah, you fucking snore as well. I'm, I'm satisfied. I hope he's in here for a long time with a guy in bed 22. He can't sleep for an, at least a week. Because I haven't slept well for a week. Awful. I'm going to get this out. That's been in there for a week. And that is a fat needle. Uh, it's like a flex needle. And it's really fucking... the the steel gauge one they put in and slipped out. That one was really, really fat. But this was on the outside of that. I think it might be on the inside, but it's still a fat fucking needle and I've had it in there for a fucking week. It's gonna bleed when it comes off. Um, a surgical procedure done, status. Last night I slept on both sides. I roll, I roll over like where I sleep normally. I had been fixed to my uh, back since the cut. But now uh, I was fairly free to roll over last night. Uh, but I had a support in there to just elevate the stack higher so the sag didn't occur on both sides. Sagging was an issue, but I slept on a pillow. I am looking forward to going home. Be a week, a whole fucking seven days, and they wouldn't let me off the ward last night to smoke. But I know full well those cigarettes weren't here. Blue cigarettes. I know that they are staff members because they were here the first day I got here, and you don't stay on this ward for a long time. This is high turnover ward. A night worker on a night shift, staff members. I take it easy. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this video probably wasn't as interesting as you think it is. Or as I, as I think it is. It's just me documenting my time in the hospital. Freedom! Exactly a week to a minute. We got in there at nine o'clock last week on Thursday. It is now... It is currently... Show me the time phone. It's currently 8.55 a.m. And at 8.55 a.m. last week, I was stood the other side of the gate, outside. Glad I brought my gig for me.
Finally, an arduous week long, locked inside. Telling me what I can, but well, not even telling me what I can and can't do. I was expecting to be in hospital for a week, but being in hospital isn't being locked in. As uh, my final review of the place would be good, clean, very controlled, very oriented towards. Uh, preventative measures of infection so if you will go in and out they don't appreciate that visitors are limited uh, yeah it was I was scared about having it done in Chinese hospital I was scared about having it done anywhere really but Chinese hospital more so but no it was good it cost me about just over three thousand pounds i've got follow-ups to do the only thing i will say is um communication be between the doctors is ill it's not particularly good and uh especially because i've got an existing condition or a suspected existing condition which this proves and i spoke to a doctor who's rather knowledgeable uh he studied abroad in america uh, he was the Wednesday doctor that I was coming here once a week to speak to and he said that he would get the VHR specialist in and all of this and all of that and then none of the other doctors even took that on board we explained we explained to them that that's what we want and that's what we were told they didn't do that we told them well uh, the reason he's got this psychoma is because uh, he's got VHR no it's not it's because of hormone levels no that's a side effect of a psychoma it's because he's got VHR oh no 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 oh yes 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 so they, they don't fucking listen and the the primary physician that i saw this week asked me to come and see him in on his outpatient days in the hospital which is not wednesday it's a different day i said no i'm gonna go see the wednesday doctor i don't like you very much you don't listen to anything i've got to say you're not even listening to me now i'm asking you questions that i need to know about like movement how restricted should my movement be should i be force myself to sleep on my back or can i sleep on my sides he didn't want to answer any questions he just buggered off and as soon as he said that i was like get the papers just fucking get out of here i'm done i'm fed up with this camp i'm fed up with this place i have some kind of aversion to hospitals i'd be the same way in a, in a uk hospital in fact it'd be worse i was better behaved here To an extent. The sweet fucking taste of freedom, eh? She just thinks I'm naughty, that's all. Naughty boy won't stay in a fucking hospital ward for a week. I did say thank you to the, the door lady on our way out, because in all fairness, she didn't have to let me out once. But she did, she let me out every single time. And she only complained about me once as well, didn't she? Or was it more than once? Twice? Maybe twice. But uh, she still let me out even though she complained, said he's smoking too much. So I'm not smoking too much, I'm smoking very few cigarettes. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the hospital you can see behind me. I was on that ward there, 10th floor ward. Pretty, uh, pretty clean place to be fair, wouldn't it? Mm.